morning, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for today's Mass. This is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. <clears throat> Welcome to Sunday Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we hear about two beautiful miracles, two different situations, which you might ask, where do I fit into the picture? What about my situation? We'll speak about that in a few moments. But now let's ask the Lord again to remove all the fears and the worries from our minds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to his people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, through the grace of adoption, choose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped up in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world 
are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him, but by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. Word of the Lord. the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. As you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, and all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs. That is there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever has little did not have less. Word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhaging for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I would touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, See how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion. People weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but asleep, and they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Telta kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that you should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, you heard the two stories in the Gospel. The first synagogue official named Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus, come and lay hands on my daughter that she will live. As he was going, a crowd followed. He went off, a large crowd followed, it said. A woman who was afflicted with bleeding for 12 years. She spent all her money on doctors, but there was no cure. And uh, she said to herself, if I could just touch him, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, 
I would be cured. What happened? Well, she got her opportunity, and she touched his cloak. And all of a sudden, she realized that she was healed. And what happened? Jesus turns around and says to his disciples, Who touched me? And they said, Come on, everybody's touching you. There's a huge crowd around here. Then the woman realized what had happened. And we're told that she knelt in front of Jesus and told him the story. And his response was, Go, your faith has saved you. Last week, we heard Jesus saying to the apostles, Do you not have faith? Today, the gospel, we see faith in action. If I could only touch him, if he would only touch my daughter, both of these cures depended on the Lord, both who asked the Lord had great faith, both are determined, both go out of their way to meet Jesus. And I might add, that's why you're here today, to meet the Lord. To tell him, to tell him, I've gone out of my way to be here today. And that's true, isn't it? You've gone out of your way to be here. You could be somewhere else, right? You could be with the others that are not here, right? Okay, they're beautiful stories, but you might say to me, where do I fit into the picture? What about me? What about my situation? What about my ailments? What about my sicknesses? What are you going to do for me? Huh? Well, a book that came out many, many years ago, a woman who has worked with healing for many, many years, especially priests, she brought a book called Miracles Do Happen. The book came out in 1972, I believe, but it's as good today as the day it came out. But Sister Bridge McKenna, in her book, speaks about other types of healing. She calls it progressive healing. What does she mean by that? She says, although many people think that their prayers are not answered if they are not healed immediately and miraculously, I have learned that the Lord heals in many ways and for his own reasons. He often heals over a long period of time. I call this progressive healing. I've seen so many moving examples of this kind of healing. The gospel refers to two passages, Mark 8 and Luke 17. Mark 8, we have the story about a man who was blind who begged Jesus to touch him. Jesus took the blind man outside the village and put spittle on his eyes, and he laid his hands on them. Then Jesus asked him, Can you see? The man answered, Well, I can see, but they look like walking trees. Jesus touched him again the second time, and he could see perfectly. When I read this, I said to myself, well, Jesus is God. He didn't have to touch him twice. He could have healed him the first time. What struck me was that while the healing may not be completed, for the moment we start praying, Progressive healing starts within us. Maybe the man was walking around for a long time, 
seen people who looked like walking trees. And then he came back to Jesus for the second touch and was totally healed. Why didn't the Lord heal him the first time? Jesus doesn't say why, perhaps through progressive healing. The blind man drew closer to God. Then he would have to be healed immediately. The two-stage healing did make him seek out Jesus a second time. After he was completely healed, Scripture says he saw everything clearly. Could that mean that he saw Jesus clearly through renewed spiritual eyes? Did it mean that if he was healed spontaneously, that he might have just taken off, took it for granted, as was in the case of the lepers? Hey, I healed ten of you. Where are the other nine? But the progress of healing. Yes, we ask for healing. And... As Sister Bridge McKenna says in her book, the minute we ask for healing, it begins that relationship with the Lord. This is something we must realize. It's in God's time, in God's way. Our part of it is to ask. And in the case of the blind man, I'm sure... He didn't take the Lord for granted when he had to come back and ask him a second time to touch him. Lord, help me to have patience when I ask for healing. Lord, help me in the waiting that I would come closer to you. Prayer changes us, not God. Let us now again on this Sunday morning profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Sunday morning, now we humbly raise our hearts our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit continue to animate her missionary work throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who govern, may God bless them with prudence in their decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the sick or suffering. May God mercifully grant them healing and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families of this faith community, may they always be open to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died with the faith in the Lord, may God grant them the reward he has promised his faithful servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this morning's Mass is being offered for Victorino Valerio and Natalia Pinaretta. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We just pause now for a moment in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you know the needs and the hearts of all who are present here this morning and those who are listening and watching on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of Saint Joseph and the Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed thou art thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. If you would follow me, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in the one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Oh.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <clears throat> This is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
Hey! 
remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O oh virgins of virgins, our mother, to you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even till the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. If you or someone you know would like to learn more about completing the sacraments, there are forms available at all entrances, or call a rectory for more information. Catholic Charities is close to completion, but there is still time to give to this important charity fund. We at St. Andrews would like to wish everyone a happy and safe 4th of July May God bless America and all her citizens. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence, and may the week be one of peace and health. God bless you. Thank you.
So I grew up in inner city Fall River. My parents really didn't have a lot. And one of the few things we could do was church. And it was there that my pastor and the adults there really kind of singled me out and said, let's, let's invest in you. If it wasn't for those experiences, those retreats, those encounters, those adults, my life could have really gone a different way. Young people are hungry, and when they are able to gather and have a powerful encounter of Jesus Christ that fosters conversion for them, that's what we need to renew the church. Experiences like Catholic Youth Day, World Youth Day, provide a larger and impactful opportunity to encounter Jesus Christ. When we went to World Youth Day in Portugal with a group of young adults from our diocese, they were able to encounter over a million other young Catholics have a global experience of the church that fostered an encounter of Jesus Christ. And they came back hungry and now wanting to say, how can I help? We are the faith in action. So when you think of the corporal works of mercy, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, welcome the stranger, that is what Catholic Charities does. That is what we embody. We are the faith in action. Did you know that the Catholic Appeal is the single largest source of non-governmental financial support for Catholic Charities? It provides critical funds for programs ranging from meeting basic needs to addiction and poverty, homelessness, and mental well-being. Samaritan House is so important because we have a lot of folks that need help, that need a place to stay, that need housing. The homeless population is really big in Taunton. This is why Samaritan House is important. We have a lot of people that call from Boston, New Bedford, Hyannis, Cape Cod, Middleborough. It's all over. And we have a long wait list as well that clients that need a bed. Um, that needs to come in because they don't have nowhere to go. Because we have um, like 18 people like to take care of like without like those donors, so I don't really know what we can do without them. So they're, they're really important for us. The Mental Health Ministry is a brand new service of Catholic Charities, and that is completely funded by the Catholic Appeal. So the goal with the ministry is to improve the person, and let that rip effect reach out to the community. To reduce the stigma and to make it uh, a clear message that all are welcome. When we talk about renewal, we know that the place that it all starts in is our churches. We need men to hear the call carry on the mission of bringing the sacraments to the people. The appeal makes possible this effort of going out to find the men God is calling and supporting them in answering that call. So for our Office of Vocations, we really are striving to bring awareness first and foremost to the vocation to the priesthood, to religious life, uh, to all of the vocations, an important lesson to learn for young men thinking about the priesthood is that the priesthood is less like a career, more like getting married. We've made an effort to be on social media a little bit more, uh, to try to be in schools when we can, to kind of come up with some new creative initiatives, just to show that there are priests still. Priests are joyful and normal and striving for, for holiness. Community Action for Better Housing, or CABA, is a nonprofit that houses individuals who are experiencing any types of difficulties, which may include low income, domestic violence, currently homeless, living on the streets or in a shelter, who often wouldn't have that opportunity elsewhere without a company like ours. 
We're living in a time where the housing crisis, uh, rent is unaffordable, there aren't properties to rent in general. It can take one little thing for somebody to go from living on their own successfully to ending up on the streets. The collaboration with the Diocese of Fall River is extremely important to us. Our relationship with them is key. They help us with any kind of social supportive services that we may need. They help us find them if needed. Renew the face of the earth. How will you help? How will you help? How will you help? There are two things that I always talk about from donations. One is that things that are seen and then things that are unseen. The things that are seen are the meals that are served at the uh, meal center, food that's provided to the food pantry. Things that are unseen are the individuals who move out of shelter and in five years come back and actually volunteer their time because of the work that our shelters um, and the help that our shelters provided to them. So your donations not only have a current impact, but they do have a long-term impact, and those are the ones that are not seen. Because the church invested in me, because the diocese invested in me, now I work for the Diocese of Fall River, a product of the programs that the appeal funds. This is how faith transmission works. It is time to renew the face of the earth. It is time to renew the face of the earth. And with your help, we can. My brothers and sisters, our Lord has blessed us in so many ways. He has been and continues to be good to us. In Him and in His church, we find the source of our peace and comfort. But most importantly, because of you, the Diocese of Fall River is here to offer physical and spiritual support to all who turn to us for help. Through your generosity to the Catholic Appeal, we can answer this call together. Please join me in caring for and lifting up those in their moments of greatest need. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. God bless you.